When you read through the Bible, there are many different descriptions for how God relates to his people. God is called the creator of heaven and earth. In Jesus Christ, God has become our father. And sometimes God our father is compared to a mother bird who cares for her babies, who even shelters them under her wings when there's danger. But there's another image of God relating to his people that shows up again and again as you read through the Bible. It's the picture of God as a shepherd and his people, you and me, we are his flock, we are sheep. Now a picture like that, it, it comes from a passage like Psalm 100 verse 3 where it says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, he's our creator. We are his, we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. But why would the Bible use that kind of a picture? Why wouldn't the Bible say that God is a cowboy and we are the cows on his ranch? Or God is a librarian and we are the books on his shelves? Well, I think it has everything to do with when the Bible was written, where the Bible was written, to whom the Bible was first written. The people of Israel, they wouldn't have had difficulty understanding what God meant with this picture. Just think of the patriarchs, the first fathers of Israel, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's 12 sons. All of them were shepherds. Many famous leaders in Israel, before they became leaders, they were shepherds. Leaders like Moses, leaders like David. Now it's true, sheep are, are gentle animals. They're even kind of cute. They're, they're useful animals. They produce wool. They're even a source of food. But when the Bible calls the people of God sheep, it's not always meant in a flattering, complimentary sort of way. You see, more often than not, sheep can be rather dumb. There have been stories of, of entire flocks of sheep of following mindlessly one after another to their death, whether it was over a cliff or into some other hazard. And so when people are called sheep, it's sometimes meant as an insult. It means that people are unable to think for themselves. And they just blindlessly and thoughtlessly follow behind someone else. They're unable to recognize danger from safety. Now, sheep are also really weak animals. As of late, I've been reading in the news about farm animals that have escaped into the wild. And in North America, this is becoming a real problem with pigs that have escaped from farms. Pigs are really intelligent animals and they've learned how to survive in the wild without farmers caring for them. And they produce all sorts of piglets and, and they're spreading like crazy in the wilderness. And they're beginning to destroy farmers' crops and they're even destroying some of the farmers' livestock. Wild pigs are now dangerous to people. Now, at the same time, I, I read a story about a sheep that was recaptured in Tasmania after seven years on the run. Its name is Prickles. Now, part of the reason Prickles was able to survive for so long was because she's the kind of sheep where her wool doesn't grow over her face. And so even after that many years in the wild, she was still able to eat grass and she was still able to drink water. But this is pretty rare, and that's probably why it was a news story in the first place. Normally speaking, a sheep that gets lost in the wilderness will soon become dinner for a predator. Sheep are weak. They're not fast. They're not agile. They're not able to defend themselves. And sheep are also prone to wander. One moment, a sheep will be with the flock, grazing. And little by little, it wanders away. And suddenly it finds itself separated from the flock, lost, not sure which way to go, not sure which way is back to the flock, and it's lost in the wilderness, and it's in danger of being food for a predator. Now the Bible says that we are like sheep that have gone astray. We are like sheep that are unable to survive on our own. We are unable to be independent on our own. And the sooner that we recognize this truth, the sooner we will realize that we need a shepherd. We need a shepherd who will save us from the sin that we have foolishly and, and blindly wandered into. We need a shepherd who will protect us 
from attack. We need a shepherd who will feed us and nourish us. But isn't that where God comes into the picture? Isn't it so amazing to think that the God of heaven and earth, the God who created everything that you see, including yourself, he's not above bending down and becoming the shepherd of dumb, weak, wandering sheep like you and me. And he is a good shepherd. He cares for the sheep. He's tender. He's wise. He's loving. He's patient. Now King David, who defended his own flock of sheep from predators, says of the Lord in Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Someone once said that shepherds, good ones anyway, they smell like sheep. They don't sit in their office or in a warm car watching the flock from a distance. No, a, a good shepherd is not above living among the flock. A good shepherd is not above the difficult and dirty and sometimes unglamorous work of caring for the lambs and the elderly and the sick and the weak and carrying them in his arms. Now Isaiah 40 verse 11, it describes the shepherd heart of God when it says he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Well, isn't that so beautiful? God is so tender and loving that weak and tired lambs, weak and tired sheep like you and me, we sometimes find ourselves being carried in the loving arms of our gracious Savior after a difficult and exhausting time, a difficult and exhausting day. But here's the best part, the, the gospel part to all of this. The Bible tells us that God has most clearly and perfectly revealed his, his perfect shepherd's heart in the sending of his son, the great descendant of the shepherd king, David, someone who is fully God and fully man, the sending of Jesus Christ into this world. And Jesus is our good shepherd. Jesus is loving and kind and tender. Now Jesus said about himself in John 10, the verses 14 through 16, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd who knows every wandering sheep by name. Jesus is the good shepherd who gathers every wandering sheep throughout history into his one flock. And you know what? Sheep, they may not always be that intelligent. And they may not always be so strong. And we may sometimes get lost. But we know the voice of our shepherd. And he calls us to follow him. And we follow him because he is a good shepherd. Because he is the shepherd who laid down his life for every wandering sheep. And on the cross, that's what the Lord Jesus did. Jesus laid down his life for you and me. He paid for our sins. As Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity. Our sins have been laid on the good shepherd. But death couldn't hold our good shepherd. And three days after he was crucified on the cross, he rose victorious over sin and the grave. And he continues to be our good shepherd. He continues to be with us and guide us through life. He continues to feed us 
He continues to give us everything that we need in good days and in difficult days. Like Psalm 23 says, his rod and his staff, they comfort us. And he's there beside us even when we go through the darkest valley. And so we remember the words of the Good Shepherd when he said in Luke 12, verse 32, when the world surrounds us, the cares of the world make us anxious. The Good Shepherd says, fear not, little flock, for your Father has desired to give you the kingdom.